Hello and welcome to my review of the Imperial Fists Legion Praetor for Horus Heresy from Forge World. One of these Praetors will cost you £22 and with the recent price increase uh, across the board at Forge World it joins the uh, very small exclusive club of just three Praetors which are at this price point, £22. I think one of the reasons is because uh, he doesn't have a, a helmetless version. However, both the White Scars Legion Praetor and the Wordbearers Legion uh, Praetor have helmetless and helmeted versions of their uh, minis. Um, so I can't really use that as uh, a viable reason. The rest of the other Praetors now, the majority of them, are all at this new price point that was uh, established with uh, the release of the Ultramarines Praetors, um, this £24. So my best advice is grab him and the word bearers one as quick as you can. Save yourself a bit of money before they eventually are leveled up to the, the 24 pound. Um, fantastic looking mini. Uh, it is the same size as a Mark III powered armor space marine. He's not a new scale increase or anything like that. The Imperial Fist Praetor in Terminator armor, uh, that was a one-off. Um, it was sandwiched between the Ultramarines 1 and the Word Bearers, the Ultramarines being the newest. Let's appreciate the model uh, as is, uh, and he's a fantastic looking Mini. Uh, really like the, the sense of uh, motion and um, action uh, that this Praetor uh, gives. Um, a bit like the, the White Scars one, um, you know, the Blood Angels one is kind of like moving forward stoically. This one is, you know, I would have expected this pose from a Blood Angels or an Emperor's Children um, Praetor, which again, we, we have not seen. Um, certainly not from an Imperial Fist one. Maybe the Imperial Fist one I would have uh, expected like a, a Breacher's Shield um, or some kind of Sword and Shield. Uh, but no, uh, this one is uh, taking the steps of uh, the Templar and um, following in Sigismund's footsteps as a kind of sword master. He's got his arm, uh, left arm stretched out uh, with nice articulation um, with the with the fingers. I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to give you the best best sort of view. I do very much like this uh, Roman soldier uh, plume, uh, otherwise called a, a crest especially as uh, the uh, plume is kind of horizontal to his helmet. I'll teach you a little bit today. Uh, it's actually called a Galea or Galea, uh, and that was a Roman soldier's uh, helmet. So it's a nice uh, visual cue that, uh, you know, the person um, yelling orders at you is a, is a unit commander. Uh, I mean, the thing is, this is the 31st century uh, with Horus Heresy and uh, actually, you know, the uh, helmets and visors are so technologically advanced um, that not only do they have a, a kill count in the bottom left, uh, you, you also have uh, ID tags, uh, friend and foe recognition, and um, it'll probably come up with a live feed of, of who that is anyway. However, you know, if they don't have the helmet, um, then uh, it's a good, good cue. Um, I would have liked to have seen uh, some helmetless versions for both this Praetor and the other one, um, kind of, you know, in, in the same personality as Rogal Dawn. I, I think um, that's what we're missing. I, I think all the Praetors, because at the end of the day, these aren't just captains. These are essentially the equivalent of chapter masters. They're in charge of thousands of, of uh, legiones and um, it would have been nice to have all of the Praetors have a helmetless and helmeted um, version because they are something special. Um, so as you can see, lots of detail on here, lots of 3D detail that you'll only get with resin. You're not going to be able to manufacture that uh, with your standard Games Workshop plastic. Um, the most detailed plastic miniature, uh, I keep saying this, I've ever seen is the Amalia Novena model uh, from Games Workshop. Um, you know, there's lots of 3D detail on, on that one, but none of the sisters come close to that. Anyway, moving back to these, uh, you've got lots of subtle 3D detailing. Um, you've even got like a, a puncture mark for the um, buckle, which is just incredible how they've managed to do that. Uh, you've got varying different degrees of, of textures and levels um, and multiple layers of, of detailing. Fantastic looking mini, uh, lots going on. Um, the sort of cape 
is quite nice too. Uh, you've just got like a little frame around it and the sword is, is a nice lovely um, sort of long sword I'd, I'd call it. The only downside of this model that I can think of and once you see it you'll can't unsee it is the sheath. That sheath is just far too thin um, to even comprehend how uh, that uh, sort of broadsword um, uh, you know fits in there but uh, other than that Fantastic looking mini. Um, what we'll do now is we'll just go through some size comparisons and then I'll go through the rules that I'll um, explain from the uh, Age of Darkness uh, Army List um, black book. Uh, so firstly, we'll compare him to other uh, Praetors. So here's one that came out before him and then here's one that came out after him. And as you can see, they're all the same size. Um, if we look at the uh, absolutely incredible word bearers Praetor there, um, you know, they are the same size, fantastic looking minis, both of them, so happy to have them in my, uh, in my set. And then, um, the most newest Praetor that they've released is the Ultramarines one, um, and as you can see, the Ultramarines one's probably a little bit taller, um, not because of the scenic base for the Imperial Fists, but because of the pose, you know, he's not running about, he's standing very erect, um, there. So that's where he compares, uh, and then just with a normal plastic Iron Armour Mark III um, Space Marine, here he is, and he did come out probably, I want to say, about five years ago, uh, and as you can see, if we just lift him up a little bit from the scenic base, um, you can see he's the same size, same size armour, everything else. So then it's great news that this Praetor will fit in with the rest of your, um, you know, sort of standard uh, size Space Marines. I might as well just uh, give you a size comparison of him next to the uh, Terminator Praetor. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's huge, but that's kind of like the size I'd imagine going from normal power armor to the Terminator armor. And remember, this isn't a standard size set of Terminator armor. He is a Praetor, second only to a Primarch, so he would have a more bespoke um, Artificer uh, version of uh, the Terminator armor for the other Legiones. So there you go, that's uh, where he measures up with the other one. Um, nice to have both of them in the uh, collection. So rules wise, uh, there's nothing really stopping you from having him as a Space Marine Captain or Chapter Master or anything like that if you wanted to use him in um, 40k. And there's been plenty of instances uh, where I've used personal favourite minis from other legions and from other eras actually uh, as uh, leaders in my um, Space Marine force. So you can always use it that way. Um, he would look great in a, in a Templar's army too uh, if you wanted to, uh, to use him as a, like a firstborn. Uh, Space Marine Captain, uh, but uh, the main reason why you probably uh, will have picked him up is for his actual Horus Heresy uh, role as a uh, Legion Praetor, and I will go through his uh, Horus Heresy rules right now. So very much like the um, Terminator Praetor, he is an HQ choice and it will cost you 100 points base. Uh, his weapon skill is 6, ballistic skill is 5, strength and toughness are both 4, he's got 3 wounds, initiative 5, 4 attacks, leadership 10 and a save of 2 plus. Um, he's an infantry character, he's normally equipped with a bolt pistol, chainsaw, chainsaw or combat blade and frag and crack grenades and artificer armor. Hence why I mentioned uh, about the artificer armor uh, before. It's kind of like a bespoke version of power armor. Special rules, Legiones Astartes, Master of the Legion, independent character. Legion Praetor may take one of the following. Uh, you've got a bolter uh, for two points, combi weapon for 10 points and a Volkite charger for 10 points. A Legion Praetor may exchange either their Bolt Pistol and or Chainsword Combat Blade for one of the following. You've got a Volkite Serpenta for 5 points, a Plasma Pistol for 15, Archaeotech Pistol for 20, Heavy Chainsword for 10, Charnabal Sabre for 10, Power Weapon for 15, Power Fist for 20, Single Lightning Claw for 20, Thunder Hammer for 25, or Paragon Blade for 25. I'd probably say this um, Praetor's got a Paragon Blade. And then uh, Praetor may exchange both their Bolt Pistol and Chainsword Combat Blade for a pair of Lightning Claws for 25 points. They may take Melter Bombs for 5, uh, may take Digital Lasers for 15, and a Praetor may upgrade a single weapon to become Master Crafted. 
Legion Praetor may take one of the following. Uh, combat Shield for 5 points, Refractive Field for 10 points, Boarding Shield for 10 points, Iron Halo for 25 points. Praetor may take one of the following. Jump Pack for 20 points, Space Marine Bike with Twin Link Bolters for 25 points, or a Legion Scimitar Jet Bike with a Heavy Bolter for 45 points. So, he's got a number of uh, rules. He's got Master of the Legion, which unlocks the use of Rights of War in your army. And you've got a number of rights of war, such as Orbital Assault, Armoured Spearhead, Angel's Wrath, Pride of the Legion, Armoured Breakthrough, Primarch's Chosen, Brethren of Iron, Fury of the Ancients, Outcast Sons, Skyhunter Phalanx, Orphans of Betrayal, Drop Assault Vanguard, Legion Recon Company, Zone Mortalis Assault Force, Sacrificial Offering. You've also got Legion specific rights of war, so the Imperial Fist's unique right of war is called the Hammerfall Strike Force, where Phalanx Warder squads may be taken as troop choices. You can take Teleport Transponders, uh, be taken for any infantry unit with the Legionis Astartes Imperial Fist Special Rule, and Blinding Luminescence. Any units deployed by Deep Strike via teleportation gain the Shrouded Special Rule from the moment they are placed uh, until the beginning of the next player's turn. And every enemy unit within 12 inches of line of sight of the deep striking unit must take a blind test at the end of the phase. Then you've got uh, limitation. So a Space Marine Legion may only include a single model with this rule as part of their HQ choice per 1,000 points in the force. So 1,000 points can get your Legion Praetor and you can only have that, that rule. Retinue Command Squads. You can include a Legion Command Squad. And then Warlords with Master of the Legion. If the model is the army's warlord and has the master of the legion special rule, they may roll twice on their chosen warlord traits, re-rolling any doubled results. So there you go. A, a lot of extra special rules. Uh, this will be, you know, your main HQ, uh, your warlord if you're not taking a Primarch for your Astartes uh, legion. In summary, I think it's a fantastic looking model, uh, a great addition. I've uh, really, if you can't already tell, I've really been enjoying all of the uh, new Horus Heresy minis that we've, uh, that Forge World have been producing over the past few months, um, and I hope it continues. Uh, I just kind of wish that they would uh, have uh, supported Siege of Terror a bit more. Uh, we've now got six books out. We've only got two books left. Um, it would have been nice if throughout all of the releases we'd had some, you know, just characters be released Maybe even if they didn't have any rules, uh, just just characters to um, be immortalised in kind of miniature form. Uh, what do you guys think about that? And what do you think of uh, this Imperial Fist Legion Praetor? Please do put your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.